Hello and greetings from our CTV Montreal studios. I'm Mitsumi Takahashi. And from her home in Toronto, Gina Cody, engineer, philanthropist. You might have seen that Gina Cody School of Engineering and Computer Science at Concordia. Well, that would be her. Hi, Gina. Hi there. How are you, Matsumi? Well, you know, we were just saying, you know, we've been trying to have lunch forever. So here we are. Finally, we're getting to talk. Absolutely. Such <laughs> okay. a delightful experience for me. So, Gina, our talk is called Women and Leadership, Top Level Tips from an Engineer and a Broadcaster. So top level tips, that's a very high bar, Gina. Are you up for it? You ready? I do my best, Matsumi. Uh, here we go. Your best is, is more than adequate, I am sure. So Gina, let's start with uh, what's going on right now. We were supposed to have lunch. Never thought we'd be talking instead in the middle of a pandemic. These are really uncertain times for everyone, isn't it? You know, what's, what's your message for people who are understandably very worried about their future right now? We are going through difficult times. We cannot, it's unprecedented and we cannot ignore it. Having said that, I came during revolution from Iran. I have been through recessions. We always come out of these hardships more resilient and stronger. So my message to people are don't give up, be hopeful and try to make the best out of the conditions that we are in right now. Concentrate on what you can control. Try to get higher education, go to your master's, you could go do, uh, learn another language with the extra time you have. So just make the best of it. We will be out of this. Yeah, it's funny because I was going to say very much the same thing. I remember years ago, I don't remember this book. It was called In Search of Excellence. And the common denominator of every single person who excelled in that book was told at one point, it's not a good time, you can't do it. And they said, uh-uh, we're going to try anyway. And that, that always is right. It's not just during pandemics and a tight job market, anything. Even when people say, don't, you've got to just go for it, right? Absolutely. You know, Gina, you're a lot like me. You're first generation Canadian. And you mentioned before that, you know, like me, you came, you arrived in Canada as an immigrant. You came in 1979. What was your experience like for you then? Oh, at that time, I came to do my education, do my master's in engineering. So my experience was that I was the one of the few women in engineering program. But Montreal accepted me with open arms and uh, Concordia University gave me the greatest opportunity with the scholarship to do my study and succeed. So really, I have nothing to say um, about my experience. I had only $2,000 in my pocket when I arrived and I was able to get the scholarship at the university. So uh, a very bad situation when I arrived because it was during the revolution in Iran when I left. And all of a sudden, the skies opened up for me. And uh, uh, so I have had a great luck and great opportunities uh, to go around and build on. Yeah, well, I was young. Yeah, I didn't speak the language. Uh, my parents are very traditionally Japanese. And it's funny, you know, Gina, I remember watching everybody around me because I just didn't know how to behave. And I remember sitting in class looking at girls thinking, OK, why is she popular? Why is she not? What is the right behavior? How I... And it taught me to be a very good observer, which has kind of served me well as a journalist. And again, I guess the message always is whatever it is that seems so difficult for us at the time is one of the things that serves us best when we get older, right? Absolutely. How old were you when you got here? Uh, oh, I was, I was, uh, I was in elementary school. Very and, you know, and I just remember being so lost and everything was just so different. And you know what, what it is, Gina, another thing? All I wanted to do was belong. I wanted to be just like everybody else. I don't know if you went through that as well, but now that I'm older, 
I see that, that there was an advantage in being different. There, you know, you can make that work for you, can't you? Absolutely. It's interesting you say that because I, when I started working, I was the only woman in the room in most meetings. Uh, I remember going to a conference. There were 700 men and I was the only woman there. So having said that, if I did my work well, everybody remembered me. So that negative condition worked to my advantage because everybody knew who Gina was and worked to my benefit in the long run because... I felt the pressure of doing the right things, not to be wrong, and always that pressure was there, but it was it worked well, as you said, Matsumi. It's exactly uh, and negative working towards positive. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true engineer, and <laughs> Gina. <laughs> but you know, but I wanted to ask you about that because we were, well, you know, in dominate, male-dominated fields, very much less so now, but when we both started, it was very male-dominated, very few visible minorities. There, there are still, but this is not to say that it's easy now either, right? Being a, being a woman or, or being part of a minority group. What are the sort of the, 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 the memories that you have, the difficulties when you were starting out? I always felt the pressure that I had to be better to be equal. That was whether it was self-conflicted, inflicted, or <laughs> <laughs> was a natural thing, but I always felt that pressure. And the gender equality stays kind of even to today's they, they, there are not that many women in engineering. Yeah. Uh, luckily, the journalism has changed. It's more gender balanced. But uh, for engineering, it's still, uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, but again, as we said, you can make any situation work for you to make it to your advantage. And I try to make the most of it on every situation by... Uh, Working hard, you, you definitely have to work hard and know your subject matter. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Do your homework always. You know, the first radio job I got, Gina, they wanted me to change my name because everybody had names, well, they were men. They all had names like Steve, Bob, Dan. And they changed my name to Marilee Taylor because I'm not... I'm not a Mary Lee kind of person, as you know. Um, so I, I wouldn't answer to it. And then the announcers couldn't remember my name. And, you know, but, but it's interesting that I don't know about you, but I never thought of myself as a role model. You know, I was just too busy just trying to survive. Um, but as you say, you know, the stereotypes remain, you know, I think. And it's not just for immigrants, but for, for women. We all still have to be you know, twice as good to get half as far, I think is what they say. Uh, a woman who tries to make her case, uh, still seen as aggressive when a man is firm. Oh, and this I also want to ask you, you know, the, the first questions I get in a social situation is, so are you married? Do you have children? I don't think men get asked those questions, do you? Absolutely not. And... The whole issue when they do that is because they feel that we cannot balance work and life. How could you be a mother and a high-ranking leader or be the chief news anchor on CTV? You can't do both of those work. You can't, you know, have a household and uh, because really you're job is to take care of your husband maybe and take care of your children which is that that old way of thinking that i hope one day we overcome and not say it anymore and not thinking not saying it is not good enough not saying it and not thinking it is the most important aspect it's interesting you brought that up because i always say when they interview a woman, the first thing they think about is, 
when is she going to have a child and go on maternity leave? <laughs> <laughs> when the guy is going to go for a thousand dollar more across the street, it never passes their mind. And that's why I kind of encourage so much the paternity leave for men so that we, are, we have a level playing field. We don't have a level playing field today. The other thing, yeah, the other thing too, you know, the, the stereotypes that come into play about successful women. So I don't have children, right? So, so I know that, you know, are you married? Yes. Do you have children? No. And then when I say no, there's always that sort of slight hint of, hmm, maybe she's a little selfish. Maybe she was too ambitious. That there's, there's that sense that they think a little bit less of me because I didn't have children. And men don't get that either, do they? No, because you're under microscope. Mm -hmm. They Absolutely. always had women in position of power or leadership or successful women. What are the things that are missing here? And we don't see that because it's not out of normal, normality for men. Men are in the successful positions. They are supposed to be there, but women are not supposed to. That's the issue. And just, just an aside, the, the other question that I get all the time, Gina, is who's your plastic surgeon? <laughs> What's that about, right? What is that about? So uh, just, just for the record, I don't have one. But, you know, I don't think men get asked that question either. So, no. yeah. Um, though, Gina, you know, I, I think we never make, you know, if we never make the choices that we make in life, there's no guarantees that they turn out, right? We, we do them. We hope for the best. I think people would look at you, look at everything that you've done, and say, wow, look at Gina. She doesn't seem to be scared of anything. You seem so fearless. Are you? Nope. <laughs> I had fear all my life. From the time I went to school, I was always fearful, I'm not going to do well. I'm writing an exam, I'm not going to do well. The night before, I would be terrified. During exam, I would be terrified. Till I get my mark, I would be terrified. Then I started working. I always were afraid of saying the wrong thing, um, making the wrong decisions, uh, doing the wrong thing. So all of this fear were with me. Having said that, I think that fear worked for me because I had the courage to overcome it. So I always say to people, fear is not a bad thing. Fear is good, provided you have the courage to overcome it. Because if you don't have fear, you become very complacent. You don't double check your answers. You don't get go to meeting prepared. And I think that comes exactly for you as well, because you are in a position that you have a huge audience listening to you every night and every day. So that fear, what fear did you have? Or do you have any? Because, you know, any mistake you make, it's going to be taken <laughs> by everybody yeah. listening. But Gina, I'm, I'm glad you admitted to the fear because I think it's important that we do that because, okay, so, so this morning, the first thing I thought was I woke up and I thought, oh, I have to do this thing with Gina. I hope I don't say something stupid and make a total fool out of myself, right? But one of the things that really helped me is there was a cabinet minister by the name of Monique Bejan years ago. She's the one who introduced the Canada Health Act, Medicare. She would stand up in the House of Commons day after day and people would call her names and criticize her and she stood there like a solid rock. And years later, I asked her if she ever cried because she just seemed so powerful. And she looked at me and she said, well, of course, dear. I cried every single day. I cried every night when I got home. But what you learn, she said, my dear, is everyone gets scared. But when you have to cry, make sure you cry at home. And 
it helped me so much to understand that, that we all deal with fear, right? The, the other thing that I think that a lot of women, and, and men too, I've got to say, is you know, they deal with shyness. I was so shy when I was in elementary school that I couldn't talk. And then I read an article that said, if you think about it, shyness is fundamentally egotistical. We are shy because we think everybody's watching us, right? So that's why we're shy, like everybody's watching. But if you stop and think about it, nobody's, nobody cares about us. Everybody's too busy wondering about themselves and the kind of impression they're making. So it's fundamentally egotistical to think that everybody is watching us and thinking, oh, what is she gonna do when everybody else is just worried about themselves anyway? And that really went a long way in, in trying to get over my shyness. I just thought, you know what? Nobody really cares if I say something stupid at the end of the day. Well, they might now, but you know, at the time. <laughs> And so I've just, I just stopped thinking of myself in, in social situations, started thinking about other people, and that really, that really helped a lot. It, it's really important because they, a lot of younger generation, they feel this anxiety, and they th think they are the only one that they have it, that they think we all had it easy. You know, we are all going through difficult times, and to achieve what you want to achieve, you have to work hard, and with that, hard work comes anxiety and comes fear and comes other issues that uh, affect us as a person. You know, Gina, your parents, your father owned a construction business. He ran an all-boy high school in Iran. Your mother, though, she was at home. She never finished high school. And you've said in the past that she was one of the major reasons you got your PhD. Why, do you think? My mom probably had the strongest effect on me because I never forget, she told me and my sister that the only way for women to succeed and to be independent, for her, the important thing for a woman was that independence, not the successfulness or other things, those were great, but to be independent as a woman, she always said, you need to achieve that through education. So that has stayed with me. I, that's why I'm involved with the university and try to encourage more women to get into the programs that will give them the platform to succeed. Because the only way as women to achieve success, I think we need a stamp of approval of our education. Uh, otherwise, we may not be taken as serious as we should be. So they have had a great impact on me. And I believe your parents were quite highly educated. Um, mathematicians, I believe. Yes, science was everything when I, when I grew up. My father taught me how to drive using Pythag Pythagorean theorems, right? Take, telling me, why don't you take the hypotenuse, you know, when you're taking the two sides of the right angle triangle? That was my education. So they never really understood why I got into broadcasting. And, it, and it's interesting, you know, the, the effect that women mothers have. My mother had to give up her career when she got pregnant. Because at the time, once you had a child, that was it. Your career just came to a, a dead stop. And she had to do a lot of, she had to travel to Canada because my father wanted to. She had to go back because my father wanted to. And she used to always say to me, if you don't make your own way, you'll always have to live by the decision of other people. So learn to make your own way. Though, though mind you, in, in later years, you know, once I did try and then, and then she never taught me how to cook. She used to say, study, stay out of the kitchen, just study. She used to say to me later, you got to learn how to cook. Your husband's going to leave you. <laughs> but, but, you know, even when I got my MBA and I did it to please them, you know, because they, they, you know, I come from a family where everybody's supposed to have a PhD. I had a BA, so I got an MBA. Called my mother and the first thing she said to me was, oh, good. And this is just a few, you know, like, like 10 years ago. She, she says to me, does that mean you'll finally be able to get a real job now, she said. <laughs> so, so my poor mother went to her grave, you know, waiting for me to one day get myself 
<laughs> it was to say about cooking because my mom never let me get into the kitchen. The minute I, she would say, you know, when the time comes, you learn it. Forget about it. Go, go study. That's yeah. what you need. There's that's a simple cooking. solution to all this, right? You just marry a man who can cook. That's what I did. I don't know about you, but that's what I did. <laughs> um, Gina, what would you say, because you've done so much, what would you say is your greatest professional achievement? It would be the Gina Cody School of Engineering mm -hmm. and Science, the faculty named after me. And it's not, I, I constantly say, it's not about me or my name. It's about being named after a woman because in two, it was done in 2018 and still now in 2020, it's the only one and the first one named after a woman in Canada is the first one internationally uh, engineering and computer science faculty named after a woman. And that sort of doesn't send the right message to women to get to engineering when all the other faculties are, uh, of engineering and computer science are named after men. So I think it was a platform that I wanted to create for more girls and get into the uh, engineering and computer science program, especially in the fourth industrial revolution where everything is about uh, technology. But I gotta know, Gina, the first time you saw that sign, you know, the Gina Cody School of Engineering, what did you think? Oh my God, it terrified me because I felt <laughs> I, I have a responsibility. <laughs> I have to really behave well. <laughs> I can't make mistakes anymore. So it was, it was a, it's a great honor. It is, and especially when I hear from the girls at school and even the boys, the girls say that now we feel we belong here. And a lot of boys say, you are our engineering mom. That's what they call me at times. So it's, it's quite fulfilling. You know, what, looking back, if you had one piece of advice that you could give people, what would it be, you think? I would say, first of all, we are in a very unprecedented times. But what I would like to tell people that we are in the era that technology has taken over and something that we have forgotten in the engineering technology and computer science, the ethics and conscious of our technology. So I would like them when they innovate and they build things, always look at the negative side, not just at the positive side. And I hope we can relay this message to our students at the universities in Canada and around the world, because we are teaching them the technical sides quite well. And what we are leaving behind, the ethics and conscious that goes with the human requirements of a technology that will shape our lives of tomorrow. And we see that today in the social media, we see that in every avenues of our life that we are seeing the positive side and the negative sides. So I want them to look at both to try to help, but always look at the pitfalls. You know, whenever um, you get these conversations, right, we're supposed to sort of look back at your career and people think, oh, it's, yeah, it's such a long career. This, but it doesn't mean that our careers are far from over, Gina. I mean, you retired in 2016, but you're probably busier than you ever have been. But do you define yourself differently now, do you think, than you did when you were younger? Um I don't define myself differently. I'm still the same person. Um, people tell me, who do you think you are? I always say I'm still an engineer, even though I don't practice it. Uh, but I think what I am concentrating right now is something that has bothered me through my life, being the only woman in the room. And uh, 
So this whole issue of equality, diversity, and inclusion is uh, close to my heart, and I try to work on that and uh, publicize that, make people understand why it matters, why gender equality matters in engineering, why diversity matters. That's what I concentrate now. Gina, it's been a lot of fun. Our time is almost up. It was great talking to you. Thank you so much for doing this. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for asking me. And you know what? We still have a lunch date. We have to yes. work that out somehow. Yes. <laughs> I will be holding you to that. <laughs> I know. I know. It was great. All the best to you, Gina. Thank you so much. And we'll speak to you again soon, I hope. Thank you.